is a company that is uh, trying to operate in two, diff two different continents, and uh, this presentation is also being made in two different continents. I'm trying to present here. My colleague is trying to fix it in, uh, in Budapest because it apparently it sort of fell apart. So um, not running the risk of you know, not knowing what is in the presentation, let me first introduce myself, um, then give you a little background, you know, why, why we arrived at the decision to found iCatapult, uh, what was the basis, uh, the business and the philosophical basis uh, for it, and, uh, and then um, uh, let me go into the details of, of, of you know, how we plan to operate and what we can do together. Um, I came to this country in 1993, went to school at uh, Cornell University, did my undergraduate and my MBA there, and in 1998 I joined uh, the late uh, Lima Brothers, where I, uh, I spent, <laughs> where I spent some time until 2003, okay, three, that's, that's a very, very important distinction. In 2003 I went back to Hungary, I founded a, uh, a strategic uh, uh, structured finance uh, consulting co uh, company which uh, was in existence for 12 months, and then after that I founded Hill. I don't know if you heard of uh, the name, Hill Yelatyaradek, or Life Immunity for Real Estate, uh, which uh, we founded in 2004, and then we founded our own competitor in 2005, uh, which is, I guess, uh, uh, kind of a very idiosyncratic thing, but we, we, we did that, and, um, and we ran that company until 2008. Uh, in 2008, um, the entire market was uh, in excess of $200 million, uh, which I think is a pretty uh, nice uh, jump change uh, compared to the fact that everybody said that uh, we're not going to have a single contract. So we, we did, and uh, at the end of 2008, when the credit crunch hit, actually, obviously, we had to turn down the uh, origination activity, and we were happy that we could just uh, uh, finance the existing uh, contracts. 2009, I started to work with a lot of startup uh, um, entrepreneurs, uh, young entrepreneurs, who actually uh, heard for the first time from me that they were entrepreneurs. Uh, there was no real good <laughs> word for that uh, in the Hungarian language. And uh, in 2009, just to give you a little uh, historical context, what was happening in Hungary, in 2009, uh, my friend Zabuy, uh, Peter Zabuy, Zabuy Peter, invited me to, uh, to give a lecture at, uh, or give a speech at the Jesuit, uh, at the Jesuit college in Budapest. And, uh, and I said, what can we talk about at the Jesuit college? And he said, well, of course, about entrepreneurship. Uh, so we went there, uh, the two of us, and uh, there were three people in the audience. So two spoke to three, and we said, well, this, this seems to be a rough start. And, uh, and at, the end, at the end of the course, there were 10 more people, and uh, that's where actually, the, in my view, the entire modern era of this sort of um, ICT startupping, um, uh, in lack of a better word, it all got started, at least uh, you know, in, my, in my point of view. Right now, uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, initiative that he started then, right now there are 1,500 people who are actively involved, um, who are you know, meeting on a regular basis, monthly and bi-weekly, uh, in various uh, educational and, and social meetings. Uh, so it really, it really, really took off. But uh, more, more about that uh, a little bit later. Uh, so um, then in 2010, I was invited by, uh, by a company called uh, Primus, Primus Venture Capital Fund, one of the eight uh, venture capital funds uh, uh, running the EU Jeremy funds. And um, so I started to look at uh, some of the submissions, some of the, uh, some of the applications. And being an entrepreneur, I looked at it with the eyes of the entrepreneur. And um, I, I, found, uh, I found a lot of, uh, sort of, a lot of, room, of room for improvement in, in, in some, of the, some of the plans and some of the, sort of, uh, some of the aspects. So we were putting our heads together. What can we do? What, what should we do to actually uh, ensure a little more success or chance of success uh, for these companies? And um, in 2000. Well, we finally came up with an idea that we should put together a company that is not only sending these companies abroad, but actually works with them going abroad. So what I could put <laughs> is, is a global business development company for tech startups in Central Europe. So what we mean by global business development is actually, we don't just want to see the 20th page of the business plan, where at the bottom of the typical 20th page where it says that, well, and once we, once we do all the previously planned things, then we go international, and then we are going to start to sell to the US, but we should start with that, with that step, that we should actually uh, try to approach the largest possible market um, available for, for, a, for a given startup. So uh, having said that, now it's a, it's a very exciting moment for me because I don't know what the next slide will be. <laughs> okay, <laughs> getting better. Okay, actually it's legible. So, um, yeah, as I said, at the end of 2012, we founded iCatapult. Uh, right now, we are five people. 
Um, we call ourselves a unique accelerator. We don't really want to be associated with the typical, stereotypical idea of an accelerator. We don't shoot for demo days. Uh, that's, not, that's not our plan. Uh, what, we, what we like to say is that we like to pick up the process after demo day. Uh, so once the company is sort of prepared, that's when we, that's when we like to take these companies and try to uh, take them to the world. Um, another way to put it is that we like to bring the world to Central Eastern Europe and we like to take these startups to the world. What we mean by taking, uh, taking the world to, to Budapest is uh, we are inviting uh, uh, sort of all the state-of-the-art thinkers, all the, you know, the most, most recent and, the, and sort of the, the most trendy uh, uh, startup uh, ideologies. For instance, uh, uh, we, had, we were very uh, fortunate yesterday we could, we could meet uh, Steve <coughs> Lang. Uh, we actually, uh, in, in March, uh, we were the first one to, uh, to introduce uh, his special course called Next, which is an experiential. Uh, learning uh, uh, learning course, uh, and we also uh, introduced uh, Lean, Start Lean Startup Machine in Budapest at the end of May, and we have uh, we have further plans to really bring uh, state-of-the-art knowledge in terms of uh, how to run and build a startup uh, to uh, to Central Eastern Europe. We have split operations in Hungary and in, in the U.S. Well, that's actually um, uh, this, there's no verb in that in that sentence. That's that's what's going to be uh, right now. Uh, we are only located in Hungary, and uh, we, are, we were actually planning to, uh, to find a place, try and find a home for ourselves in the U.S. Uh, for a while, we were thinking about New York, um, and um, it looks like that um, for, the, uh, for the immediate first or, first or second, second year, uh, we will, we'd, rather, we'd rather move to Silicon Valley, uh, because that's, that's what we feel that this is uh, sort of for the, for the typical uh, um, most... Um, most energetic up-and-coming startups, that's, that's what I think that the, uh, the, the most appropriate place to be, uh, at least for Central Eastern Europe. Um, we know that it's not a, a three-month process, so uh, we, are, we are not expecting that any kind of miracle uh, would happen in, in 90 days to any of these uh, startups, so we are prepared for about uh, one and a half year that we, we, when we are taking these startups to, the, uh, to here, to the valley, uh, it's only a beginning, in, only the beginning of a process. We take them here for three months, then we are actually going back to the back to Hungary, doing a, doing a lot of uh, development work, and then coming back again, uh, in, in constantly uh, working on developing contacts and partnerships. And the the other that is very important is that we are uh, committed to uh, to raise quality of uh, education, not necessarily grammar education, as you can see, uh, <laughs> quality of uh, of startup education. That's uh, for us. Uh, that's that's key because. Um, um, that's, I think that's where, the, that's where we have the biggest room to, uh, to, to cover. So what my understanding and my, my, my current uh, um, uh, summary of, uh, of what, the, uh, what the ecosystem, what the startup ecosystem is like in Budapest. It went through an explosive growth, just like I described uh, earlier. Um, there is a dominance for ICT and, and life sciences, uh, fortunately. Um, the teams are typically technically very, very strong. Uh, but they, they drop off very fast when it comes to business development. Uh, that's probably cultural, that's probably, you know, in, you know uh, it's sort of somewhere rooted in, in, the, in their education and in the focus of the education. The good news is that it can be changed really fast and it doesn't necessarily have to be changed from within, but it, ca it, has, it can be changed with, with uh, good cooperations. And the other very, very important thing that I have to mention is that we have global successes. Um, just like you already saw uh, in the morning, uh, Prezi, Ustream, Love Me In, the three ster almost ster stereotypical success stories of, uh, of, of Budapest. We like to quote them that they are, they are the first three and the only three uh, major successes that, uh, that are uh, undoubtedly uh, a success in the, in, in the global scene. But, but what we forgot to mention is that, it's, and it's true for, almost, uh, for all three of them, that uh, their Hungarian market is close to zero. I mean, if Prezi has to, ha would, have to, would have had to live on uh, the income that is generated from the Hungarian market, and the same is true for the Ustream and for Love Me In. That's that's close to zero. They are in, they were immediately <coughs> focusing on the global market. Why? Because they realized that the global market, the English-speaking global market, is huge, uh, is approaching 500 million uh, as we speak, and uh, that is probably the uh, the richest and and most uh, most influential and the most. Um, most attractive market uh, at, uh, at this time, in, in 2013. And by 2013, it is incredibly easy to reach them because of all those platforms and all those communication channels that the, that the Apples and the Googles of the world 
uh, created for us. So um, it, this is a realization for a lot of Hungarian startups who are sort of born and raised in Hungary. They don't really realize that what they consider uh, sort of um, um, uh, consider a, um, and, and sort of an everyday tool of communication and everyday um, um, <coughs> mean of, um, of of getting things done. That is really uh, a general um, uh, sort of a general method uh, all over the world. People living in Paraguay, living in Canada, living in South Africa or in Russia, very interesting that they communicate in a very, very similar way, they interact uh, in a very similar way, and they consume very similar ICT products. And that's, that's one of the keys for the success of Prezi, for instance. Prezi has 22 million users, uh, 2 million of the, of the users are paying users right now. So um, um, their, their success is really rooted in the fact that they, they actually touched on a global nerve. And, and that, that is the key to their success. So what is, okay, one side of the table is what, what the startups are like in Budapest. What, what about the capital market? Um, well, I would put it, I, I, would, I, I put it in a, in a sort of rather blunt term that it's a wash. With funds, uh, there are 10, there are 18, uh, 18 venture capital funds right now looking for startups uh, from the seed stage all the way to uh, the, uh, the growth uh, stage. Um, they are very much focusing on on the local and the regional market, I would say 80% of them, for again for cultural and for uh, sort of historical reasons. Um, there is a uh, there is a very 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 uh, uh, low supply of, co of of good companies. There's a deal hunger. Uh, what I mean by that is that uh, imagine that there are some of some of these some of these uh, venture funds that uh, that are under sort of a pressure that they have to invest um, into one company every two weeks. That's, that's sort of the, the schedule that they are facing um, based on their agreement with, with their investors. And that's, that's creating a lot of, uh, lot of heat in, in the marketplace. And that's why there are so many startup um, events. That's, that's why there, are so m there, there is so much talk about uh, this, uh, this segment of the economy. Uh, okay, so this is, this is where things start to get a little interesting. And yeah. So let me just, uh, yeah, here I, I mentioned to you the, uh, the, the, three, the three major ones. And so what, what, we, what we do when we look at, when we look at these, these startups and when we say, okay, we, we, we try to assess who we would like to work with, uh, these, are the key, these are the key issues that we, that we always address. Is it ICT? Is it addressing a global need or global problem? Uh, is it understandable for hundreds of millions of users uh, around the world? Um, is it customized or is it is it uh, is it generic? And the other thing that is uh, that is very important, and I think it's uh, it cannot be emphasized enough in the Central European uh, context, is that um, many of these startups don't use the very very simple ecosystem tools. What I mean by that uh, is that they're simply not open. Um, they're sort of focusing in, uh, fo focusing inside, uh, you know, into the processes uh, of the startup. So they're, 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 they're a bit myopic, they don't share information, they don't like to share information uh, with, with, with other startups. So they sort of have to be a little bit shaken up and, uh, and uh, we need to explain to them what, what it means to be a global, global player. Uh, we brought three, com three such companies uh, to the US, um, uh, first for, th for two weeks to, to New York and for a week here uh, to Silicon Valley. And it was a joy to see how those people actually transformed from being uh, typically typical technical founders into uh, pitch masters, um, <laughs> people who really, I mean, you couldn't actually make them speak about their company for anything, and at the end, they were pitching each other's companies to, uh, to, to investors, to angels, and to, uh, to, to, other, uh, uh, to other entrepreneurs. So it was really a, really a joy to see that, and to a great extent, to a great extent, the reason why they actually went through that transformation was because of the ecosystem here. Because when, when we went to a, to a meetup, and in the meetup, in the second sentence, they meet someone, in the second sentence, the person says, how can I help you? But that, you rarely hear uh, in, uh, in, in the Hungarian ecosystem. So that they, they were, in the beginning, they were very suspicious, you know, why people want to help them. But uh, very, very fast, they realized that, you know, this is just the way the startup ecosystem works here. And uh, they transformed immediately. And um, it was really, um, to me, it was a, it, it was a very uh, uh, sort of satisfying uh, feeling to, to see that um, at the end of the tour, at the end of the three weeks, they said, well, when we go back to Hungary, we want to share this information with the others so that they know that there is, there is a sort of a, an openness waiting for them here. Um, 
Now let me just uh, uh, pay tribute to the others uh, who are not Hungarians, but also from Central Eastern Europe. Um, these companies, you know, some of them Lithuanian, Czechs, uh, Romanian, um, let's see, Serbians, uh, Slovaks, and obviously, uh, obviously Estonians, they all did the same thing that Prezi did, that, that Logmi and that Ustream did. They touched a global nerve. They realized that there is a global need for that one particular domain, that one particular segment, and they were going after it, and they are, uh, for the most part, they are incredibly successful. Uh, so we haven't invented the wheel, we just tried to use it. Um, so when we, when, we look at, when we look at our goal, what we have to do, as I could have, what we have to do with these startup companies is, is basically these, uh, these four or five major points. We have to actually st start to give them the tools <coughs> how to understand the world, how it operates. Not everything that is written on TechCrunch matters. And not everything that matters is written on TechCrunch. So <laughs> there, are, there are so many other things that, that they have to understand, that they have to actually internalize, and that they have to um, uh, make a part of their daily, daily life. They have to have allies. That's, that's again, that's a, 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 that's a huge breakthrough when they, when they start to form partnerships. That they have to, they, they don't have to uh, create everything themselves. They can actually form partnerships and they can form uh, alliances with others. Uh, obviously, for for mutual benefit, um, because this is this is uh, such an environment. Uh, English has to be the operating language. Um, that's uh, uh, and not only language but culture. That sort of goes hand in hand. Uh, that that again is is key. Um, a, a very very nice anecdote that that uh, that I like to share about it is uh, one of the startups was uh, was uh, in my office and, and he said, "What do you mean by what? What do you mean by you know English as an operating language and that?" You know, you need to be open and you need to have a, a sort of a constant flow of information. So with that, um, I wrote two sentences to one of the famous VCs here in the US uh, about the concept uh, and about the, one of the major questions that startup had, and I sent the email. And before he could actually ask me, why did you do that, we got the answer. We got the answer from the, from the fam famous VC. Uh, the startup couldn't believe his eyes. He said that this is this is made up. This is just a, this is just a mock-up. I can't believe that he immediately responded. But there was a catch. He responded, but he responded with a question. So now you know there was the startup sitting there, and he had to answer to that famous VC in obviously, assume, uh, presumably in about a minute or two. So that was that that was a that was, to him that was a very very shocking experience. How fast they have to think. How how uh, how quickly they can get to certain certain level of authority and um, and how much uh, how much the competence that is that resides in the start startup or how much that matters uh, everything that that everything that we do and we want the startups to do everything in lean development methodology